Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice, and today we're going to talk about the HPV virus family, human papilloma virus, and its association with cervical cancer, as well as the Gardasil vaccine to protect against certain strains of this HPV virus. So we did know about cervical cancer quite a long time ago. Uh, researchers recently noticed that the only group of women that were not at risk of getting cervical cancer were celibate nuns, and they figured it was not their religious faith that protected them from cervical cancer, but perhaps there was a sexually transmitted cause or something related to intercourse that caused the cervical cancer, and the search for a virus was undertaken, and this is how we found the family of HPV viruses. Uh, there's over a hundred different strains of HPV virus identified. Uh, some are fairly benign, some are greater at risk of causing cervical cancer, and some can cause genital warts. So if you contract one of the HPV viruses, it makes a home in your cervix or vagina, and this can irritate the lining of the tissue and cause precancerous and then eventually cancerous cells. So if you have HPV virus, you are at a greater risk of cervical cancer. If you do not have HPV virus, then you are at none or very low risk of developing cervical cancer. When we do pap smears, we take a small swab of the lining of the cervix and we look at both the cervix cells to see if there's cancer or precancerous cells. We actually can now do testing for HPV viruses as well. So when the doctor does a pap smear, uh, they will either test for precancerous cells and if you have abnormal cells, it will test for the HPV virus. Uh, you can also ask that regardless of your pap smear results, they can do HPV testing. And this would be important to know if you had HPV virus uh, you want to be sure to get your pap smear every year. Even with the normal pap, you're going to be at a greater risk. The good news is, is the majority of HPV will clear itself in one to two years. So if you contract one of the HPV viruses, assuming you're not continually being exposed to a partner who has HPV or another partner who has HPV, your body has a very good ability to clear the virus. Uh, as long as you have the virus or if you have repeated exposures to the virus, then you're going to be at a greater risk of developing cervical cancer. Uh, we used to recommend your screening pap smear start at age 18 or when you became sexually active because that's when we would start to see the risk of cervical cancer go up. Uh, the current recommendations are now to wait until age 21 and that does not make a lot of sense. The rationale is both a financial one, if you don't screen women at a younger age it costs less money, uh, as well as we do know that the HPV virus can take five or more years to cause cervical changes or cancerous changes so I think the rationale was is if you get HPV at age 16 or 18 then why bother seeing you until you're 21 when you might start to get cancerous changes and obviously you want to screen early you want to intervene early you want to make sure you're doing you know safe sex talks uh, and getting general education as opposed to waiting for someone to show up with precancer at age 21 there's a vaccine that has been developed, the Gardasil vaccine. Uh, Cervarix is another one, and there was one that was taken off the market. And we'll talk about Gardasil because that's the most popular uh, vaccine. It covers against four strains. So when you get a Gardasil vaccine, it's a total of three injections over a six-month period. And it gives you uh, some protection or antibodies against type 16 and 18, which are the two most common strains associated with cervical cancer, and type 6 and 11, which are two of the strains associated associated with genital warts. A couple of problems is, is that it does take three shots. Uh, they're over $200 a shot, so figure about $700 for the full course of therapy. Not everybody gets all three vaccines. They drop out because of cost issues. Um, not everybody gets 100% conversion to immunity with those four strains. And there are other strains that cause both warts as well as um, cervical cancer. So uh, the vaccine effectiveness is anywhere from as low as 17% from protecting you against cervical cancer up to probably a best of under 50% effective. So it's not a bad odd. It is expensive. There are some side effects associated with it. It is not a perfect vaccine. The other recommendation now is that boys are starting to be recommended to get it as young as age 11 or 12 and as old as age 26 as well. And the thought is that we protect boys from getting HPV infection and they don't spread it to girls or to women um, and that will decrease the risk of cervical cancer. 
Uh, there's some possible benefits with anal rectal cancer can be caused by HPV as well as mouth cancers can be caused by HPV. Uh, these are very, very low and is, is possibly as low as 300 cases a year of anal rectal cancer associated with HPV virus. So you're talking about maybe 150 men and 150 women. So to give every boy a vaccine for something that happens 150 times in the entire country uh, is very, very low. So I think the data on treating boys and men's with the vaccine is at best limited, uh, but there's decent uh, data showing that it does protect women. So HPV virus, over 100 strains. Uh, the Gardasil vaccine protects against four of the strains. Another possible concern not often cited in the literature is that if we, even if we eradicate those four strains, 16, 18, 6, and 11, because there are multiple other strains, it's possible that other strains will take the forefront without competition, and we may see new strains emerge as the more prevalent strains. So strains 24 or 34 or any of the other strains could show up as a more common strain. And we honestly don't know what the cancer risk of these other strains because we don't see it enough. So if 16 and 18 are gone and two new strains pop up as the most prevalent strains, um, it is possible that they are more virulent or cause more disease than type 16 or 18. Um, it's possible that nothing happens, but that is a consideration. And we honestly don't know and won't know that for probably 10 or 20 years. So um, if you're your doctor recommends the Gardasil vaccine, I would ask them certain questions. Um, it's probably a good idea. We don't have a better option at this point. Um, your best defense is probably safe sex and to use a condom and to make sure you see the doctor at least once a year um, and have your pap smear annually when you're either 18 or become sexually active would be my recommendation. Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.